Okay, so one of the most common questions that we receive from new customers we work with is why is automation so hard to do in Proe and Creo? Basically, we get this when we hear this question, we know somebody's hit the wall. And we first kind of have to ask, what is automation? Well, basically, it is the reducing or eliminating of the routine and the leveraging of the corporate know-how to get accurate and more reliable results faster. There are personal benefits to doing this. I'm not saying that's the main reason for doing it, but people who have done this and done it well typically are very valuable to the company and more employable out in the market. So what are the various methods out there that people have been using for automating stuff in Pro e and Creo? Well, these are the different techniques, the tools, and the capabilities that are there. We've taken them and aligned them in this order um, so that you can kind of see the required skills to do them relative to the complexity and difficulty of achieving the result. So if you're a standard user, map keys and relations are pretty straightforward. Everybody kind of understands how those work. Not a big deal. But when you start getting into toolkits like Pro Toolkit, JLink, and Visual Basic, the skill set required to do those well is different. So you typically need a different person, different set of capabilities to come in and help with that, typically from IT. And the problem there is that they may be very good programmers, but they may not understand how Creo and Pro Engineer works. So there's this kind of balance that occurs. So the difficulty of creating applications and then managing them over time with different skill sets uh, and different people being involved is typically where you find the most benefit, but also the hardest time. So one of the biggest problems out there is with top-down design. Top-down design has been around for years. People have been using it. They've put a lot of faith in it. Top-down design basically means you have an assembly structure and you have geometric relational or regeneration relationships that occur within that. Um, that creates dependencies, which means the structure must kind of stay together to work. That complicates the management storage and item reuse and typically requires um, a pretty sophisticated PDM or PLM system to manage those relationships. If we look at this a little bit differently, um, the very first kind of approach that people make for doing automation for top-down design is to, you, is to use feature relationships and component relationships between things in the structure. The problem with that is you're defining and embedding um, fixed relations, which locks the relationships together, which means that something can't exist in another design without the dependent component or the parent component being there also. So that hampers item reuse significantly. Another technique that's used quite commonly is ProProgram. ProProgram is very powerful, but it has this tendency to lock things together. Um, basically, you drop your values into the top of the, of the structure, and then you, uh, through an embedded process, kind of put logic into the structure. It's not visible to the user, typically. It's kind of hidden in the background that passes information from one level or one relationship to another to get information where it needs to go. Another technique that people kind of use is to use something called a layout or notebook. Layout notebooks, um, basically they're a central place to collect information and then you declare relationships to the target models that you want to pass information to. Um, the problem with that is that your layout requires a dependency with those particular objects in uh, Pro Engineer Creo and you can't really separate them easily. They have to be manually broken to be able to be reused elsewhere. So having one component or a subassembly be able to be reused in another, in another design requires you to break that relationship and reestablish a new relationship uh, to make use of it. The biggest problem with top-down design is when you start seeing people combine all of these techniques together. Um, when they come all together at the same time, everybody screams because things happen that people don't understand because there's embedded logic there and things are happening and they don't understand because there's these other dependencies that are that are missing or need to be reestablished for it to work correctly.